Cell 411 is a great free app for Android and iPhone. It allows you to set up public and private cells for dealing with crime, emergencies, setting up neighborhood watch, activism, and even protecting your kids from bullies on the street or at school. Cell 411 gives your cells turn-by-turn -turn directions to your location with one touch on your phone. There is also a Bluetooth panic button available that can be worn on your wrist, belt, or around your neck. Cell 411 has real-time chat for each alert so you can discuss the incident with family or friends in real-time video streaming. The video is stored on Cell 411's servers so your evidence cannot be deleted if your phone is taken or destroyed. Cell 411 has decentralized ride-sharing that allows for payment in any form – crypto, barter, silver, cash, etc. Cell 411 does not take a cut of your fare. Get Cell 411 free on Google Play and the iTunes Store or go to GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Well, well we've got to protect the American people from the pump pumpers and the dumpers. Well, we got to protect our Federal Reserve from any kind of competition. That's, that's another reason. I am not a crook. It's, it's another reason I've been trying to uh, not, not actually... Is government always Richard Nixon? <laughs> Maybe. Well, if those crazy kids want to get into Bitcoin... Oh, I've got something to say about that. <laughs> we are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery. Statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 130th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a Bipcot No Government License. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the <coughs> agents thereof. You and that means you, Cambodia. You can find out more information about this at bipcot.org. So we are back. I am Jeremy, joined as always by Dave and Andre. What's up, guys? What up? Hey, what's going on? Well, not much. and uh, Well, actually, lots, I should say. <laughs> not, I shouldn't say not much. Uh, but first, uh, this week we are brought to you by Cell 411. Gonna give a shout out to my boy Virgil. You know why not? He does so much for everybody else. And I was talking about him a lot today. Yeah, if you are if you're not aware of Cell Four One One, it's the great app for your phone that is designed to essentially. Uh, the original design was to get you to be less reliant on government services like fire, police, uh, emergency services, stuff security. like security. Yes, security issues, but rather uh, rely on your friends and neighbors and either trusted groups of people that. You uh, you selected, or you, you know, you could set up public cells where you can call for help uh, in situations where you know it may take a it may take a lot longer time for the government workers to actually get to you, whereas you know your neighbor can be there in a matter of seconds. And you know, I'm, you know, the cops have their response time, but if your whole neighborhood you're getting knows you're actively getting raped or assaulted, they're not just going to sit around like oh, I guess the cops are coming. Well, you never know. I mean, unfortunately, you see all those videos out there all the time of, of some horrible thing happening to somebody and people standing around videotaping and, instead of actually doing something. Uh, but speaking of videotaping, that's the other wonderful thing about Cell 411 is you can actually videotape things yourself, you know, in situations if you feel uh, unsafe in any way. I mean, I used this particular feature back when I had my problems early, earlier this year and I was being harassed and threatened and everything. And uh, I had Cell 411 running almost constantly. And I made use of the the video feature, which is great because it, ev everything you record on Cell 411 goes straight to the Cell 411 servers. So even mm -hmm. if the cops grab your phone or somebody grabs your phone and tries to you know tries to delete the delete it uh, the video or smash it or you know smash your phone or whatever, yeah, damage is done. Yep, the all that stuff is is saved and you can retrieve it at a later time uh, when you're able to. So that's an awesome feature. And the last I think I think it was the last uh, thing they added. It might have been done more since then, but was the the ride sharing, which. I mean, we've talked on the show before about being fans of things like Uber and Lyft and stuff like that, but I am a huge fan, although I have not had to use it yet, only because I haven't had a need to, but 
the cell 411 ride sharing because not only is it you know even more decentralized Do we need to make a liberty group on there uh, i don't know <laughs> but not only is not only is it de- not only is it decentralized but you can make payments in any shape form or fashion that you wish it's not just you know relegated to cash or credit cards and stuff like that you can actually you know pretty much everything's open whether you want to do uh you know whether you want to do cash whether you want to do cryptocurrencies whether you want to do gold and silver whether you want to barter with your driver all of that is open and uh you know gives you a lot more options on how to pay for services like that so i think that's a wonderful thing so you know, once again, if you don't have cell four one one already, I highly suggest you go to the Google Play Store, or I'm pretty sure it's on iOS too, and then uh, you know, download the app, check it out. Anyway, and that guy's welcome on the show anytime he wants. Yeah, Virgil's a busy dude. One of these days, I'm going to try to get him on here, but uh, he 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 he's a, he's an acquired taste. Uh, he seems to tick a lot of people off because he's uh, very uh, boisterous. But uh, I, I love the guy. And oh. I'm of course. I don't know anyone like that. No, not at all. And I'm also um, obviously a big fan of his because he was nice enough during the time that I was having all those troubles earlier this year to send me the Bluetooth panic buttons that Cell Four One One sells now, and uh, he actually sent me one for free and uh, to try to nice, protect nice. myself. Yeah, and uh, I also tested that out and it worked great. You know, I, I hit it and I got responses from people within seconds. People were messaging me asking me if everything was okay. Even the one time I accidentally triggered it. Uh, people uh, <laughs> got back to me. Yeah, like, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, it's great. Accidental triggering. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, man, it happens. But Anyway, so that's enough of that. At least it wasn't a gun. I also, <laughs> yeah, Plexico Burris, anyone. I also, <laughs> I, I also want to, before we really get into the show this week, I also want to say uh, first that uh, I do apologize for anybody who listened to last week's show. Uh, the sound quality on our guest, Randy England, was a little bit off. It was completely my fault, not Randy's. Uh, having done radio with him so often, I did not do a good enough sound check when we started the show. Uh, last week and I was busy doing a bunch of other things and I really didn't pay attention so I didn't notice it till after the fact that he was uh, he was coming in much louder than everybody else so even trying to even that out a little bit it sounded a little distorted but uh, I hope everybody was able to enjoy it uh, I still you know a shame on me bad, bad host but I, I I think I think it was still bad salvageable host, very bad host yeah and it was a great it was a great episode too I really enjoyed that conversation we are still just an amateur outlet here okay it's yeah. not like we're Fox News or yeah. whatever yeah, we're only 130 episodes in. Wait till we hit around 1,000, man. Then we'll be cooking with gas. So, <laughs> Thank God we're not Fox News. I'd hate to be owned by Rupert Murdoch. Me too. Let's <laughs> least give me some Coke money first, right? Uh, but so That's right. Yeah, it's That's so right. much easier getting this Coke money, ain't it right, guys? Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, right? Uh, so anyway... This week, I guess uh, the one thing that we, we, we've all discussed amongst ourselves and just keeps seeming to be a topic of conversation. Uh, in fact, we've seemed to be dedicating like almost an hour to it every week on The Fiends as well on Sunday on my Sunday night shows. But it's just so exciting right now. I can't help it is the uh, what the continued going ons in the crypto world, which as we've we've talked about before, I mean, it's not like any of us are experts. I'm, I'm probably like the weakest in, among the three of us as far as this information goes. But it's exciting as all hell. And, you know, even for somebody like me who's still a relative noob, it's exciting. It's it's fun to be in. And uh, I mean, as we record night right now, I think uh, Dave said it before we started recording that Bitcoin, I think it hit 8000 again. So so much for that yeah. death that everybody was uh, warning about with Bitcoin cash. There's, All those bankers, they were like, it's going to die. It's a bubble. Well, it's, I mean, it still could be and probably is to some extent in a bubble, but yeah, I don't know. I it's mean, deflationary. It's a deflationary. Ah, well, that's, that's what I was, that's what I was fixing to say is, uh, I don't think it's in a bubble because there's artificial demand. I think it's in a bubble because compared to the U S dollar, the U S dollar is going to continue to lose value. So Bitcoin is just going to continue to keep going up. Well, Which I, I mean, think holds out based on uh, what it's been doing, aside from like random spikes where people have pumped and dumped. But uh, oh, the general trend has continued to be upward. Well, I mean, I sure hope so because, again, I mean, I'm I'm still relatively new at this, but I, I keep trying to read as much as I can. I, I've joined a bunch of those uh, cryptocurrency groups on social media, so I could try to like, you know, just lurk. There's there's one on Telegram too that I just kind of like. I, I I have the notifications uh, muted, but I constantly check in and just kind of lurk and like read what everybody else is talking about and try to keep up on stuff because as i mentioned to dave earlier 
I'm kind of at the point where I'm really considering diversifying further and I guess, you know, not necessarily jump, you know, try to jump on the next, you know, the next big thing like so many people are trying to do. I mean, of course it would be nice, but I I'm trying to see if there's ways I can, you know, do more with the money I currently have in the crypto world. And uh, e even so far as like trying to figure out if it's actually worth purchasing equipment to do some mining, because there are still some currencies out there that are, I guess, uh, worth mining. Mineable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, Monero, for example, from what I've from what I found out is actually still relatively it's 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 still so possible to mine Monero that you can actually mine it on your phone. So. Wow. OK. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Wow. There's a, get on that. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of different apps and the, there's one that I just started testing out in the past couple of days and I've read multiple things. A bunch of people I saw called it a scam that a bunch of other people I said said that they must have been doing something wrong because they've been getting payouts regularly for like over a year. Um, not that it's a lot, but it's, you know, still something and it's a minor gate, which, uh, you know, it's an interesting concept. I mean, basically, obviously, you're not going to get a lot of hashing power with your phone. But you know you're hopping into. But one you of got the, a bunch of old phones laying around. You well, see, that's the thing. You're you're money. you're just hopping into pools, and you know, I mean, obviously, I've you know, there's other services out there that do this type of stuff too. Well, I that's think. how distributed DNSs are going to work, right? Like I've been trying to look into uh, setting up mesh nets with old cell phones, like uh, the the fastest, easiest way that like even normies could do it, and set up whole mesh nets for their whole neighborhoods. Um, it's I I. I don't know. Like that's kind of where we're going with the, the bitcoins as well. Like if there's mobile mining, then the sky's the limit. Yeah, of course. You know, and then uh, you know, companies like this also offer things like what they're calling cloud mining now. I guess where yep. you can cloud mining. Yeah, where you can actually you can purchase hashing power from them, so you don't actually have to have the equipment. Although every time I look at the numbers, it seems to be even more money to do the clown mining than it would to actually purchase something yourself and use it. So that's kind of where I've been going back forth on the, the only reason I kind of dug the the at least a minor gate for now, because again, I'm just I'm just testing it out. I, I know I don't expect huge returns. But you know, it, there there has been a constant influx of of of, of uh, a minimal amounts of uh, Monero. And uh, I think a couple other coins because they have it set up that you that uh, you can actually m mine multiple coins together. And, uh, oh wow! Yeah, there's only a couple of them, like some of like the lesser known coins, ones that I ha one that I hadn't even heard of before, Phantom Coin, which I think is currently trading somewhere between ten. It all doesn't even matter. You can shape shift it in a bit. Well, that that's so, the like, th that that's the advantage of this is a lot of their stuff is that you can sh you can shape shift it or you uh, they use changely, but you know the same basic thing and that you could do you know one to the other and the, the thing the the cool thing that I liked about Minergate was just that it's you know your account is run off your email address so you can just plug it into any system that you're working on and run a <laughs> miner and they all get connected so i think at one point last night i had all three of the laptops i have <laughs> running the miner at the same time my my current cell phone and as you were mentioning dave one of the old cell phones that i forgot that i had that i i found a battery for plugged it in and it worked i'm like hey that's great you know, just flip on the Wi-Fi for that. Now that's running. It's running on the Wi-Fi from there, too. So, uh, you know, I went from my crappy little laptop, which used to only get somewhere in the 20 hash rate range when I was trying to mine Bitcoin to uh, over 100, I think. So, you know, it's fun. And it's, what is it called for the audience? Um, uh, Miner Gate is the uh, is the program. I'll put I'll put it in the show notes again. I'm sure I'm sure some people listening will scream that it's a scam because I've read plenty of things, but I've read enough from from both sides that I'm just like, ah, you know what, for the minimal amount of electricity that it will cost me because I'm not super concerned about it because my electricity costs, despite them constantly rising in here in New York, have never been really uh, ex expensive because I have a relatively small house. And I have that thing beaten into me from my dad when I was younger that, you know, you're supposed to turn a light out when you leave a room. So I constantly live mostly in the dark here in my house, especially when my kids aren't here. Uh, I, I rarely, you know, I have mm -hmm. a, a light on here, a light on there, and that's it. So I don't use a lot of electricity except for, you know, using the computer to do shows and stuff like that. So, you know, like I said, I figured I'd test it out, but I'm still looking into the other things because, you know, I, I've been. I, I've been told by some people, oh, it's not even worth it to spend any money in in mining rigs. 
because it's so hard to mine things these days. I mean, sure, if you're trying to mine Bitcoin, then yeah, you'd have to spend a whole fuck ton of money and not get much of a return because the difficulty is in the trillions or something or some ridiculous number like that at this point. But you know, for things like uh, for things like Monero, I think the difficulty is still only in the thirty million range right now. And there's plenty of other coins that are even even le- even less than that. And you never know; one of these things could take off at some point. So, if you ha- you know if you have the capability or you have the time, uh, and and you don't mind testing things out like this, I figure why the heck not, right? There's also another thing that I wanted to to bring up since we were talking about uh, you were talking about how uh, Minergate, but uh, people have told you it's a scam. Uh, BitConnect. Have either of you guys heard of? Oh BitConnect? yeah, actually, I wanted to ask you about this because you mentioned this earlier. I wanted to, I I've heard of it, but I don't know much. So bit. why don't you uh, inform us, okay. my friend? Yeah, all right. So basically, BitConnect has its own token uh, right now. I think it's trading at like three hundred and five dollars per coin. Uh, so it's up there. It's Similar in value to uh, is what's Ethereum at right now? Uh, some oh, somewhere over three. Uh, last last I saw uh, was three thirty. Just looking at it. Hold on. Uh, so it's something like that. So it's uh, uh, twice as much they, as they Bitcoin Gold. So. Coindesk.com. Yeah, right. The thing with uh, BitConnect is three twenty nine. Tra- okay, so you you send uh, Bitcoin from the wallet you have, um, and it only works with Bitcoin. They don't do Ethereum or any other uh, coins, but just Bitcoin. And uh, then you purchase, uh, well, then you, you lend out the Bitcoin via their trading bot. And basically the way it works is you earn a percentage return every day through in BitConnect coin, um, loaning it out. And so it it depends on market volatility. The way the way it's explained on the website and the way I understand it is the more volatile the market, the higher the uh, percentage rate per day uh, you earn. So right now I'm earning at about like one between 0.9 and 1.4 percent every day. And uh, the cool part is you can it, it basically it sends it to your BitConnect wall your BitConnect wallet, which they have a web wallet. They also have a, a software wallet that you can download and. Uh, you can store it in your in your BitConnect wallet, and you can run the wallet in uh, proof of stake mode. And basically, what that allows you to do is allows you to earn a return on any BitConnect coin that's in there. So not only can you lend it out and earn a return on the lending, you can earn a return on proof of stake in the wallet, and you can run a miner. So there's like three different ways that you can earn residual returns on uh, BitConnect coin. Hmm. Right now, I haven't I haven't uh, moved anything into the wallet to run it in uh, proof of stake mode, but uh, I mean that's also a possibility. So and then I, and then as you would reinvest more uh, into the amount? lending. What's that? Is there a minimum amount? So like, could people test this out? Uh, the minimum amount that you can lend out is a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin, basically. So that's the minimum amount that so you can lend. So you're so you're lending out Bitcoin and getting BitConnect in return. Is that is that am yes. I understanding you correctly? Yes, okay. that's correct. Okay, because all right. So that's I mean. So I do understand the idea basically. Because uh, what is it? Is Polynex there? They do something like this as well. They do. A, they have a lending. Oh, uh, I think so. If I remember correctly, I know a lot of people that uh, I, in the groups and the and the people that I follow to try to get information. Yeah, yeah, like Pol- yeah. Polo does. Polo has a uh, a lending platform, I so you can actually lend out your money. I, I was I was actually just on their website, Polynex's website today, just looking at it, or Polynex, however you pronounce it, uh, looking at it today, because I was because that because again, I'm I'm trying to figure out because. I, I'm at that point right now with you know with this continuing uh, increasing price. Well, now it's increasing again the price of Bitcoin. Uh, I'm at a point where I'm looking at my my total holdings as of you know at the moment, and I'm like, all right. I keep saying I want to hold this as lo- you know I'm hodling as long as I possibly can so that hopefully when I finally sell the house and get out of New York that I could get a fresh start with like some of that money too. Yeah, but. I also would like to get more in there and I don't have much of a way to get, you know, other than the occasional donation, <laughs> there isn't much way for me to get more crypto in there at the current moment because I don't have any money to, to I don't have any uh, fiat to invest into it. So I'm trying to, like I said, I was trying to figure out the mine, you know, some different ways to do mining things. And then I was, I was looking into the lending thing. So I'll have to look at BitConnect too then. Cause the other nice thing about BitConnect is depending, cause they have a uh, different, like basically, um, 
from a hundred to a thousand dollars, you don't earn a residual percentage just based on the dollar amount lent, but over a thousand. So it's like, I think a thousand to 5,000, you earn an additional 0.1% on top of the volatility percentage. And then I think from like five to 10,000, it's 0.2 or 0.2 or something like that. I don't, I don't remember exactly what it is. I don't have it in front of me, but, uh, the more you lend on there, the more they add an additional residual interest paid out per day. So there's that advantage as well. The more you lend, the more you earn. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, yeah, like I said, and I've heard people tell me it's a scam because they do have like a referral system where you can, you can earn, you know, bonus points for, uh, getting people onto the platform through you. But, uh, I mean, you don't, you don't have to, you, you don't have to enter in a referral code to use it. It's, just earns other people money. Yeah, well, well, most 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 programs have that. I mean, Minergate has that. Anyways, too. guys, my referral code is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, uh, my, Minergate has that too, and you know, it's it's whatever. You're getting a cut of their profits because you know they're very they're open about the fact that they're making profits off of you, and they're obviously using the combined hash rates of everybody to make to make money. Although you know they're not doing this yeah, out exactly. of the kindness of their hearts. So yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I, I had heard the name BitConnect, and I had heard things about scam and stuff like that too. But you know. In this day and age, you, you obviously have to be careful, but there's so much stuff going out there, and it is because, especially because of the extreme volatility in in the just in the crypto sphere in general. You know, you're always at risk. <laughs> you know, you could theoretically have your entire what you think is your savings wiped out in a day. You know, just by the, yeah, the market yeah, changing, and uh, you know, as it is, I've already seen. A, I saw a lot of people screaming today about you know how bitcoin cash was uh, coming down again and nah, some yeah. some people were talking about you know what when was the right time to buy back in and then i saw a bunch of people freak freaking out going buy back in i'm already i've already lo- i've already lost a ton of money in the past week cuz they all bought in as it was going up last week when it hit like yep. th- when it hit that insane uh-huh. when it, like, it hit like what 25 almost 2500 i think for like a minute and, yeah, uh, and then it just and it start dropping back down. Yeah, which to be fair, I did buy in at a, a down point, and then I made a little bit, uh, selling a little bit higher. I didn't make much, but uh, I did manage to get on a swing in there, so that was cool. Yeah, well, it's- sadly, if only I had uh, invested, if only I had Bitcoin in my wallet uh, prior to the fork, and then I could have just had some free <laughs> Bitcoin cash. Just free cash, with, but uh, just you know. free cash. Yeah, no. Well, that's you know, um, that that's and you and I'm right. You can just shape shift your Bitcoin Cash right into Bitcoin and just be like, I don't even want to have nothing to do with Bitcoin Cash. Oh, sure you can, but you got you know, it's yeah. The, I you, think that's what I'm gonna do. You have to do well. <laughs> listen, man, I I don't know. See, like we were talking before the show. I mean, I and I've I've mentioned this on previous shows for before my uh, my hatred of the Jack's wallet. And uh, the fact that those bastards finally got the finally got the Bitcoin Cash up, uh, update on the uh, app available a week after I finally said screw you guys I'm done and I le- I finally left and paid ridiculously high tr- trans uh, mining fees just to get all of my coins tra- uh, you know transferred over to new wallets on uh, Coinami instead because I was just so fed up with waiting for Jax to fix their crap. And, uh, you know, I also at the same time, I also finally got myself out of Ethereum because uh, the craziness of the uh, founder was starting to really sp- was starting to really spook me. Plus, all the security uh, um, problems they seem to I've, have. I've always been doing a weird thing with my Ethereum. Like, I'll check it like about once a week. And if it's not, it's always worth more than two hundred dollars. And I always transfer the the I don't know, just for fun. What's over two hundred dollars? I transfer that into Litecoin. Just so basically, I've been using my Ethereum profits to trickle into Litecoin, and they've all been growing. Every one of them. Well, Lite- Litecoin's another one. Litecoin started to spike. I think it got up to seventy four dollars again earlier today, and uh, I saw a bunch of people all excited about it. You know, saying that it was going to start. They were thinking it was going to start mooning, but uh, I guess not so much because it definitely got higher a couple of months ago. I think during the the craze uh, right before the f- well that's the first three cryptos i've really focused on is bitcoin ethereum and litecoin and uh you know i've i've just really haven't delved too much deeper into the other ones mainly on time issue like i guess i could delve into it but i don't see the reasons to i i, I well, feel if, like if all you, of this you, is temporary you, i feel like one's going to come out and just wipe them all out 
See, so, yeah, I don't really see that happening. I yeah, mean, but that's yeah. I was I was fixing to say that's what it you know that's that's always lurking in the back of everyone's mind. Like, oh, there's going to be another coin coming out. It's going to be the Bitcoin. Well, killer, I mean, and if Shapeshifter is letting you ha- uh, shape shift between all of their coins, what's wh- well, what happens when Shape Shift? Well, I mean, what happens when like a decentralized autonomous uh, exchange happens and then they have Skynet. their own coin, and then they have Skynet their coin. own coin? Skynet yeah, Skynet coin, coin whatever. That's that's what you have to worry about because taking that human factor out of certain things really takes a lot of risk out of it too. I don't know. I, I like I said. I don't. I don't. I mean, because humans have bad days. <laughs> this is true, but I mean, like I said. Well, yeah, but I don't see how autom- how an automated exchange with its own coin would necessarily do that. Well, everyone would just buy into that one coin, though. <laughs> like there would be no I reason not to. Yeah. All I, other coins, you would just be sideshows essentially not no not really yeah. i mean that that really discounts that a, a lot of the uh, other ancillary work that uh, happens on blockchains and different currencies because i mean well i mean it allows there's a for lot that, of different applications division of labor essentially yeah but uh, division of capital essentially yeah but it but it, but, but it would still have a one currency that's backed on all no. of hey you can trade all these currencies for this one but again, I don't like Bitcoin yeah. is currently that one right now. But what happens when it's but not it's, that one? It's not though. So many people are are in and out of Bitcoin constantly that it's it, it's not the only one. And you know, if you you know at least what I keep reading, it just seems more and more, especially especially when it comes to Bitcoin and them canceling the whole Segwit the Segwit two thing, that their focus is no longer about being the digital cash of the future. It's. It seems more and more. You know, like, it seems more and more that the they're fridge. digital gold. Yeah, exactly. That does seem to be. I mean, I know. I, I think Peter Schiff had a piece out about that again, of course, today because he's he he gloats anytime he could find anything negative about Bitcoin. Although, you know, again, it's 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 so weird because other, I guess, more mainstream uh, outlets are starting to either adopt it or talking about adopting it. Which freaks some people out because they think it's going to be, you know, it, it's just going to become like mainstream, like everything else, but in a bad way, I guess. Uh, although I don't really see how that could necessarily be a bad thing. Well, as opposed to now, where pretty much every exchange you need to use Bitcoin in order to get to that exchange. Well, yeah, we had talked. Yeah, we had talked about it on the previous episode. You brought that. You brought that up. That it was uh, basically the medium of exchange of the crypto world itself because yeah most places that is you know even the one you, you what you're talking about with bitconnect yeah you get a different coin out of it but what do you got to put in to get there bitcoin <laughs> bitcoin exactly <laughs> it's just it, yeah. i mean it's obviously going to keep being crazy for a while because no matter how many people find out about bitcoin or or already in bitcoin and stayed in bitcoin and and want to support bitcoin you know the the crazy transaction fees do start to take a toll, especially on people who are either just getting in or are not holding that much to begin with, you know, because if it mo- most people that I know, I was one of them, were sold on the idea of Bitcoin originally as the fact that it could be, you know, digital cash, basically, you know, that you could just carry around in your phone and you just pay for things just by scanning the QR code and stuff like that. And if that's not, you know, if that's no longer its purpose, if it does, you know, if it can somehow become the cryptocurrency gold, I guess, great, grand, wonderful. But then, then the question becomes, what is the one that that's going to take its place? And uh, you know, there seems to be a lot of a lot of contention for that. I know a lot of people seem, well, at least that I run into, seem to be higher and higher, or at least they were for a while on Litecoin, which I was always excited about because that was one of those ones I was able to get into relatively cheap. So, you know, I was like, all right, great. If that one takes off, woohoo. <laughs> yeah. I that's why I've just slowly diversified and slowly trickled in. I just wanted to always be have a visual, you know, I need to dump all of my coins into this. It's obviously about to take off. You know, you never really want to dump all of your eggs in one basket. Basket in my opinion, you want to spread it out and and keep it to where, you know, if Ethereum does crashes, oh well, you only lose this much money or whatever. But you can always keep a little bit of money in an account just so you can operate, you know, if somebody's like, "Hey, I only take Ethereum." You know, it's uh, okay. I have $200 worth of it, you know, whatever. Yeah, but again, that's the great advantage of things like Shapeshift and Changely. 
that you uh, yeah. you don't even need that anymore. You know, because I I had I had that issue when I got locked out of my Ethereum for that month because of the, because of the update Jax did, and I couldn't actually access it without using the without using the aforementioned Chrome extension, which I had no interest of using. God, like, Jax sounds just like a giant sack of shit. You know, like. Uh, it was it, it it was a great concept when they first came out with it, and I really liked it for the you know in the beginning because for its ease of use, and uh, especially for somebody like me who was a complete idiot when it came to that stuff because that was really my first you know before before I got the Jack's wallet, all I had was Bitcoin, and then I had my BIP coin from the failed venture when mm -hmm. Michael W. Dean tried to get that up and running, which uh, I actually went back the other day and found I still actually I forgot I still have my wallets, which I still have, which is actually another thing I'm going to need to do soon. And I forget how to do it. So I'm probably gonna have to get assistance from somebody. I got to go try to sell that stuff on Cryptopia because people are still actually buying and selling it. And uh, I just want to dump that at this point, I could probably get at least a Litecoin for all my Bitcoin holdings. So that'd be nice. You know, because again, I didn't, I really didn't spend money on that. I mined all that, and it, it was easy mining because it was all the way at the beginning of the of the you know the blockchain when there weren't many people doing it. And my crappy little, my two little laptops doing like you know between twenty and thirty ha uh, hash uh, hash per second. <laughs> we're still <laughs> we're still bringing in like you know at one point we're bringing in like close to a hundred bips a day. So you know that was fine. That was fine for me. It wasn't really taking that much energy to get all that. But yeah, it was it was great then. I I loved it because, like I said, it was so, the Jack's wallet was so easy, and it was like, oh, here we go. I can I can start this wallet. Okay, I have my private keys. Great. Oh, okay. I can add all these different wallets, and then I can just shift the things back and forth with it, like literally just yeah. clicking on a button and adding how much I want to trade. I've had no problems with Jacks for the record. Like I've just had no problems. Well, but, like I, mean, I they said, they have been buggy sometimes. No, like I said, I didn't have any. I mean, I heard about security issues and stuff like that. Uh, but I didn't have a problem with them. And I had told you this before. I, I didn't have an issue. For me, the first issue with them was with the Bitcoin Cash integration because they announced, you know, like a week or so before the fork, or maybe it was even longer before that, that they were going to be integrating Bitcoin Cash. But because they already had this slate of other projects lined up ahead of time because I think they I, I seem to recall them touting something like 30 updates in 30 days and basically like an update a day for 30 straight days that they were they, they've been touting for a while that they were going to start rolling out shortly after the for the the fork on August 1st with the Bitcoin and they you know after it happened they were silent about it, like their Twitter, ever, like nothing. You you heard you, nobody heard anything from Jax on what was going on, and then they just kept rolling out these other updates. And then, after the end of the first month, finally started coming when those thirty days were getting closed up. Then they finally spoke out and said, "Oh yeah, it's it's coming. We're we're really close." And that's how it went on for like another month, almost another month and a half at that point, because it wasn't until I think the beginning of this month, I think maybe November 7th or something that they finally launched it. And even then 30 updates in 30 days, bro. Yeah. Even, even when, even when they finally launched it, like I said, it was only available on the Chrome browser for the first least week because I finally got the notification that the update came in today that added the Bitcoin uh, cash wallet to Jack's finally. So that was my original issue, but I was still wait. I was still waiting, you know, and I was still willing to hold out and wait for them to finally get that update. But then the thing with the, with Ethereum happened, where they updated it and found out after the fact that the update that they did effectively wiped out the ability for a whole crap load of their users to be able to access their Ethereum wallets. Because it was, it turns out that anything that was running Android 5.5 or lower, which happens to be me, because I don't, you know, I, I don't rush out to get the newest phone, so I'm usually always a couple of years behind. Because then I can, I can still find them brand new uh, online somewhere for really cheap. <laughs> and then it's like, You're hey, such I, a luddite. Hey, man, whatever. I don't, I don't need all that fancy stuff. Plus, even with Android, I, eventually they got rid of the uh, removable battery, which is a feature I've always wanted to have on my phone for security purposes. So, you know, I, I definitely. Definitely, I'm not rushing out to get the newer ones, but that was that that because again, I could have accessed it if I wanted to do something like use the Chrome extension, which I had no interest in using. So it it was just so frustrating, and just the way their support handled the situations, 
I just became more and more frustrated. And, you know, like I said earlier, it just it, it came to a point where it was worth it for me to pay all the fees just to move mm-hmm. all, even my Bitcoin, just move everything out to a completely different wallet and just say, I'm done with you folks. You know, because like I tried to do the Bitcoin Cash uh, integration, and it they kept it kept telling me that I didn't have any funds to be able to be claimed. And when I wrote to support, they're like, "Well, are you sure?" And I'm like, and I sh- sent them screenshots and everything. I'm like, "Yes, this is when I had this is when I deposited the money. This is when it, the transactions right here. My Bitcoin was in here this whole time. So clearly, I was in there before the fork. It's your wallet. This should be simple, right?" And just the way they kept treating me, I was like, yeah, I, all right, I'm done. <laughs> so yeah, I, I have moved on. Well, if it's, it's, it's a product and it's capitalism and you're, it wasn't fulfilling the need that you wanted. So you moved along. That's all it was. Dirty, dirty capitalists. <sighs> exactly. So, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm done bashing them at this point because I, I don't have to deal with them anymore, like I said, except, except for that little amount of Bitcoin that's still in that one wallet because, of course, as, as I was getting so frustrated and trying to do everything, the price changed as I was about to shapeshift. So it ended up with that, that little residual that's too, too little of amount to actually send. So it just has to stay there and sit there and hope that maybe one day somebody you know sends me some Bitcoin to that address so I could finally take it out. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, I mean, like I said, there's so many exciting things to be doing here, and I don't know. I just, uh, I, I may not know a lot about it, <laughs> but I'm I'm trying to learn as much as I can because it's definitely exciting times. And there are, I keep coming across more and more people that have made a whole ton of money at this, and not just necessarily the ones who who were the early adopters of Bitcoin. You know, like obviously yeah. those people, the ones who all that everybody thought was crazy that got in big back at like, you know, a dollar, ten dollars, fifty dollars, whatever. I mean, you boys almost not I mean, you boys almost probably never would have heard of me. I almost bought ten thousand of them when they were a thousand a dollar a piece. So Damn. Yeah, I had it I felt like I was it was a scam. I just didn't believe it. I I was like, you know what, this is a scam. And even then, I didn't trust buying ten thousand and being able to safely store them and stuff. At that time, because you got to think about when they were a dollar, that it was just like big leap. Well, of yeah, and no, and you've got a point. You've got a point because back and it, then, and it like, was security was a completely um, different thing, and it was not nearly as integrated as well and across as many platforms as it is now. So there was there was it was a lot. There's a much bigger bar to getting into it and keeping your stuff secure. So. Well, yeah, and and then there was the Mount Gox stuff that was it was all around yeah. that, you know, the af- that happened way after that. But I was just always afraid something like that was the play, and didn't fully understood it, stand it as much as I did later on when it got to around a thousand. I really was like, hey, I might need to look into this way more. <laughs> um, Stupid and, me, uh, I had I had almost half a Bitcoin when it was seven fifty. Mm-hmm. So, and then I pulled it out because I wanted to go ahead and pay down one of my credit cards. Well, and boy, oh boy, am I kicking myself in the ass for that now? Well, yeah, Fuck. But th- and that's a, that's that's actually that's a good point to make, Andre, because that's actually what I was going to say in regards to Dave. You know, saying you know you you would have you know say you did buy that you know say you did buy in at a dollar for that much if you took that leap of faith. You know what's to say sometime between now then and even a year ago. Uh, you wouldn't have sold in any of the other panics when they, you know, when the when the price volatility drove people insane and it started spiking. Yeah, my mindset would have been completely different, but I probably yeah would know. have been just following what Roger Ver or one of those guys were doing. I probably would. Well, yeah, but you have you ten thousand bitcoins. The world's a little different. Well, yeah, but again, getting it, you know, you're talking about you're talking about this with hindsight now too. You know, if you take that out of the equation, yeah, of you, ne- you never know, man, because. All these millionaires now and billionaires now that are libertarians that are aren't telling people how much money they have, they could be affecting things mass, mass, mass affecting things, giving money to propaganda outlets and stuff. And they're not. They're not. They're just not thinking about that yet. They're not thinking it's new money essentially, and they don't understand how to throw that money around yet. And um, that's got to happen soon. Well, I don't know about that. And and again, I think. 
I mean, sure, there are people within our circles that are like that, but that was that was my point before: is that it, it's not just the people that are like that with the, with the Bitcoin money. There's I keep coming across more and more people who are making a whole ton of money right now just in trading in the you know in the different currencies and stuff. I think our I think our buddy Merrick Land- Landingham is one of those people. <laughs> he, uh, I see him constantly out there. Uh, Po- oh po- yeah, posting good stuff. old Merrick, and and I don't re- I don't recall him sitting on a stash of Bitcoin or anything. He just had some and made it really really work for him <laughs> because he's gotten involved in all this type of stuff with the trading and uh, the lending and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, it's you know, and and again, there's so many there's so many outlets to find information about this too. I mean, and and of course, it's created a new, uh, you know, it's it's created a new job. Essentially, I see more and more people offering their services as a consultant for uh, cryptocurrencies. You know, so it so it's, it's also the new stock market, man. Yeah, instead of commodities, we're trading crypto. Yeah, which which is funny because so many people that that so many people that bash it, they're like they 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 mock it in that sense. But it's like, well, how long has stock trading been around, and why does that keep happening? If it's you know, if it's such a hor- you know, such a horrible, horrible thing, <laughs> you know, people want to do it, man. Speculating is uh, is exciting. It's you know, you can you, know, you especially if you just follow the history of any of this stuff and you see things. You know, e- even in this day, what is that sound I keep hearing back there? Sorry about that. <laughs> you, uh, my girl's moving around. Let oh. me mute it. Yeah. So it's there. I forgot where I was going now. Damn it, Dave. I don't know. It's just fucking exciting. There's man. a whole world out there, man. Yeah. It's a whole world. Oh yeah. Whole no, world. and I was saying that. Yeah. For even even for somebody like me, there's so many outlets for you can find find information, and uh, you know, and you know, I mean, you could pay somebody to help you with this stuff, or or you could just study it yourself. And and get and get involved and also take one cut one step closer to freedom, you know, getting away from the. What I've been trying system. to find because I've been trying to diversify my holdings a little bit. I don't have a whole lot to work with, but I am trying to kind of spread it out in a couple more places. And I've been trying to find coins that are attached to projects that actually have some sort of worthwhile end or aim to them. So like uh, different ways to utilize the blockchain. Uh, we're talking about like distributed applications and stuff like that. Um, so that's my criteria. I mean, there's a lot of people who like, you know, like American, like other people that I know, uh, they play the market and they game the market and they, uh, they make, uh, short-term gains, quick trades. Uh, some people do day trades. I'm in a whole group of people that day trade crypto. I've since kind of tried to give, basically given up on that. Cause I never seem to make any money. I'm either too late or too early, but either way, I don't, <laughs> I don't end up doing it right. So I'm just going to leave that to other people. It's, it's fine. It's not my bag, but uh, I'm trying to look for coins that I can put uh, some money into that are going to be more long, like medium to long term investments. And those really, you have to take a look at what the project is that the coins are supposed to fund or they're supposed to work within, right? So, uh, um, like for example, Utopia IO, which just got started here recently, it runs off the Steam blockchain, but it's like uh, it's like GitHub basically but it's on the steam blockchain so you can you can post the same way you do you do polls and stuff in uh github Mm -hmm. but you earn steam for it so stuff like that projects like that where there's actually a a purpose behind the coin um and it seems like a relatively saleable purpose uh i'm trying to get involved and and you know purchase some coins here and there uh try to diversify more my portfolio for like more long-term returns of course, that's, there's no guarantee that all of these things are actually going to take off or do anything besides stay where they're at. But I mean, at least they're you know, it's you you exercise a little bit more uh, discerning quality over what you're trying to get into rather than trying to play the uh, day trading game. Yeah, and of course, there's no guarantees for any of this stuff. But you know, again, especially if you're getting into those type of things that you're talking about, normally those are newer projects. So even if you are investing, it's not. You know, you're not. You don't have to invest that much to actually get involved. So, if you have a little bit of money that you would have just blown on something stupid, you know, why not take a chance on that? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, for like you know, twenty, thirty dollars, you can get you know a small yeah. stake in you know a project coming up. And if it does take off, then that you know twenty, thirty dollars can turn into three hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollars. 
And if it actually ends up being a successful project, that'll be growth over time. It might not be, Let's you know, very dramatic growth, but now. it'll continue to go. They can essentially go public with a, a coin instead of, you know, stock or anything. The, the coin wasn't the, be wasn't stock. the SEC trying to do something with uh, ICOs, initial coin offerings? Didn't they like ban them or require them to file with the SEC? Something happened with I, that because no EOS clue. was trying to launch their ICO and there was a whole big to do about, oh, well, we're not going to make any coins available in the initial offering to people in the United States because we don't want to file with the SEC. So, wow. I have something happened. I don't remember what it was, but I, it's it had something to do with the SEC and having to file um, basically like a stock offering almost, but in coin with the SEC. And it had to be confirmed by the SEC before he could do it. And of course, that you know imposes a whole slew of new regulations on you as to what you can do how much you can offer you know who you can sell to how much people can buy at one time when you can sell you know there's a whole laundry list of things that then like become concerns for you yeah thanks government <laughs> yeah that's great you know it's just fantastic fantastic thanks a lot yeah well, well we've got to protect the american people from the pump pumpers and the dumpers well, we got to protect our Federal Reserve from any kind of competition. That's that's another reason. I am not a crook. It's, it's another reason I've been trying to uh, not, not actually... Is government always Richard Nixon? <laughs> Maybe. Well, if those crazy kids want to get into Bitcoin, well, I've got something to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> the Constitution says no body, but I've got a shiny new body. <laughs> oh, no man. body can be president for more than two terms but i've got a shiny new metal body <laughs> oh. oh futurama richard nixon head is probably one of my favorite characters on that show because he's going oh, to be yeah. richard nixon for the all of the rest of time <laughs> yeah that would that's that's my that's horrible could you imagine Ugh. anyway if i wanted to run like a dictatorship I would want Richard Nixon to be head of the secret police and then George H.W. Bush is the head of the CIA. All right. So <laughs> you guys want so to talk Nixon about this? Uh, so I got Nixon the as here. the head fed and then I've got George H.W. Bush as the CIA main man. The world is my oyster. <laughs> I'm Oliver North doing something. You just I don't need know what Kermit, you, something. you just need Kermit Roosevelt and the whole thing's done. Um <laughs> Uh, Sylvester Stallone accused of sexually assaulting 16 year old. Uh, oh, what's for going fuck's on here, guys? sake, man. Is, this oh, is, just like, is, this Rocky, is such bullshit. Is Rocky going down, boys? What's uh, going on? I don't. First Roy Moore, now Rocky. <laughs> you know what? And I'm starting to get the feeling that a lot of these are not, in fact, true cases. I mean, I, I could be I could be wrong, and I'm not gonna. I don't uh, think I, I'm not gonna Sylvester automatically Stallone's discount. Stallone's ever had to worry about pussy. I mean, that's that's my, just my two cents. Like, well, even so, I mean, sexual assault is not necessarily a, like a sexual, sexually related thing all the time. But uh, yes, but I mean, and I and I don't want to discount and I don't want to discount people who may genuinely have been like violated in their person. But at the same time, yeah. this is strangely convenient that this is all happening all at once. You know, like, where did any of this, where was any of this? Where did any of this come from? Yeah. I, 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 I find it very hard to buy into the whole, oh, well, you know, now that one person came forward, now everybody's going to come forward. Like, there's some truth to that. I'm not going to deny that, but I, I ain't buying it. I, I ain't buying it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, the, the argument well, if, usually goes that it's, you know, once one person comes forward, it becomes easier for other people to do so. Right, and, and I also, totally agree with that. I, I think it, that's but true. It, but but uh, but as uh, you know, I I'm, I'm not totally disagreeing with you because it do, it does also present the opportunity for more people to come out of the woodwork just and make these claims because it's, especially when it money. has to do with well exactly especially when it has anything to do with uh anybody of, of wealth and fame be and or power well, yeah well yeah wealth power fame all these people are are so blackmailable or you know have the the you know all these openings to be blackmailed that there's no telling you're right well so but yeah but i mean it's like you really can't until the until the accused comes out and says something, I don't really I, I 
I tend not to pay it any mind. I try. I mean, I don't. I usually pay attention to most of that stuff anyway. I try not to, at least. But you know, until like, especially you know, what happened with uh, with Louis C.K. You know, I know a lot of people right away were going, "Oh, this is just BS." People are just making up everything now. And then, like later that day, Louis is out there with a full announcement. Oh yeah, this is totally true. I can't even, you know, I'm not. I'm <laughs> oh not yeah, even, I grabbed I'm not, even, I'm, not even, I'm not even. I'm not even forgiving myself for. But any, he did. That's that the did. right thing to do. Is oh no, is he handled he did it, some shit. He go, probably, yeah, I did it. Sorry, it. I need help. He probably handled it the best out of anybody I've seen that has ever had to go through this. You know. Well, you well, know what? If and, anybody's going to do it, it's going to be a comedian, right? I, yeah, I know, right? Here's something I'm really curious about because every state has different statute of limitations on their torts. Right, the claims that you can bring against another person. So I am eminently curious as to how long ago all of these claims have been happening. Because if like the statute of limitations is, say, I don't know, let's say, it's all let's a, make a it generous. Piece. I get what you're well. Saying. Let's make it generous and say it's like ten years, right? And this happened thirty years ago. If I'm being accused of that, we'd be like, no, I'll take you. Your, you can take my ass to court if you want. I'm going to bury you. I'm going to move for. I'm going to move to dismiss the case because the fact you don't have a claim. Well, yeah. yeah, but again, when you're dealing with, especially when you're dealing with people with money and power and all that stuff, it, it, it you don't ha- you don't have to necessarily have a legal claim in this day and age. We unfortunately there is a very large outrage culture, and oh no 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 no, no I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying like if I was that person, either a I'd be like okay, fucking let's bring it. What do you what do you got? Put it on the table because I guarantee you don't have enough, and this is going to get dismissed, or. <laughs> I mean, assuming they did it, which is, I mean, it would be a shitty thing to pull this card off. But if this was like 30 years ago and the statute of limitations is 10 years, like you, you know, for a fact, you're not going to lose this case. It's not even going to go to trial. Yeah, but again, well, yeah, it's all a hit piece, dude. Well, most yeah, of this stuff it, is hit piece. Exactly. Because it doesn't, it doesn't in this day and age, especially that, that, that matters less and less, you know, it's unfortunately as as screwed up as the system is, you know, in this regard, it would be great if if it still worked like that, but it it doesn't because it it, it does. I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you if you can't have uh, a trial, uh, you know, you'll still get buried in the court of public opinion, and people will make up their minds anyway. And well, I'm just saying, I wouldn't I wouldn't voluntarily hand over money to these people, especially if they were lying. <laughs> Well, I, of course, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would not. I would never ever, my, uh, ever make it a point to. My settle. friend not said ever. this though. My friend said this the other day, and it, it is dead on. He said everybody that comes out claiming that they were raped or assaulted by somebody should immediately all of their bank accounts, everything, be investigated because if if they just got like eighty thousand dollars out of nowhere to say somebody touched me in nineteen seventy or whatever, like obviously the whole thing falls apart right there. Well, yeah. I hope this doesn't go anywhere I, near James Woods because if it does, I'm going to be sincerely pissed. <laughs> I'm like, sure maybe that come, there's been a I few women that have said that before. Hey! Yo. <laughs> anyway. Well, I don't really know how we got here. Never mind. Dave brought it up, so I know exactly how we got here. Uh, we just, <laughs> Did you have to ask? No, I, I really didn't. So. Grab her in the pussy. Uh, on, on that note, bef- before, before the rabbit hole gets any deeper, we should probably... <laughs> We should probably get close no enough anyway. The rabbit hole goes. Since we have totally left the uh, original topic of conversation at this point, uh, do you guys have anything else you want to say in closing? Though back to the, back to the uh, crypto world and stuff like that. Uh, uh, no, I, just, I don't don't really have anything else, man. I just got done reading a Steemit article on how to get, claim your Bitcoin Cash. Hey, uh, look at you so on it's, Steemit! It's pretty e- pretty easy stuff. Uh yeah, Steemit might be the retreat we have to go through, boys, so we don't get banned off the platforms. Like they can downvote you on Steemit, but they can't ban you off the platforms from what I've understood. Yep, that is correct. That is correct. And there's a dude on there, Bernie Sanders. Uh, you know, forgive him the name, but uh he's got a negative 19 reputation and he is like one of the biggest names on the platform. So, it, you know, even if you get nuked, there's ways <laughs> to come back. There's yeah. ways to come back. Uh, one of these days, I'll look into that. I just never have the time. Don't don't go over there. It's a scam. It's a scam. <laughs> Everything. Everything is a scam. Everything except is for a water filters. Damn scam. Except for my water filters that are gravity fed. <laughs> Super male vitality. All right. On that note, we will close out. 
Uh, so this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. Uh, our Patreon is still up and running. We, I am a little behind on putting stuff out. I know I promised I'd have an episode a week, but after being sick and then dealing with everything I've been dealing with the past couple of weeks, I have not gotten anything out. And now that I've been so involved in doing all this research for the past couple of days, I haven't got around to it either. But there will be, I'm going to try to put out at least two episodes next week to try to make up for that and then uh, come back to putting more stuff out after that. And once again, thank you everybody who continues to contribute to us and anybody who is considering contributing to us in any other fashion, especially through cryptos, as we have been talking about through most of this episode, our buddy Paul Gordon has still yet to fix things on the website as I have asked him multiple times. But well, once again, since he's doing all this for free, I guess I can't really complain that much. Um, But that's not true. That is not true. You can complain because I, he's Paul Gordon. He deserves it. I, I can, but I'm choosing not to. Um, actually, that's not true. <laughs> he's just, probably just busy beating Paul. a dead horse I'm, or something. I'm just, yeah, that, that would be that would be uh, uh, par for the course. With that Paul. does take majority of his time up. Or uh, not true. frying bacon. Or not yeah. frying bacon. No. Yeah. Ba- Who the hell? He, he's a baker. No, he's a, never mind. He's a, he's Let's not go like down me. this road. I'm going to so, get angry. Yeah. So anyway. Um, bacon pure. So, since anyway. he's not got that set up yet, just yet. Uh, if you do go to the latest episode on the on our webpage, it's always the uh, oh, the latest episode is always the YouTube and in the show notes. That is where all of our crypto addresses are located. So if you want to toss us a little bit of something something in uh, a wide variety of cryptos, then feel free to do that too. That would be great. All right. So once again, this has been the Seeds Liberty Podcast, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace in the Middle East. Fuck you, Estonia. Are you sick of seeing peaceful people being locked away for victimless crimes? Instead of trying to get out of jury duty, consider taking it so you can do the right thing. A single juror with a conscience can send someone home to their family instead of to a jail cell. If there's no victim, how can there be a crime? And if the judge or prosecutor are keeping you in the dark, what are they trying to hide? You can vote your conscience instead of being a pawn of the state. For more information, Google jury nullification or check out the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Teens Radio Show. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. Agoristhosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites on. Online. If you have a mission critical commercial presence or a world changing activism site, go with agoristhosting.com.